Comic book superhero movies are all the rage these days. These modern myths are packed with action, drama, and mind-blowing visual effects. A large part of the appeal for fans is spotting these seemingly invisible references that fly over the heads of casual moviegoers. Sometimes references in these films can be blatant and quite obvious. Other times, viewers have to keep their eyes peeled in order to spot them. Sometimes the references are not clear until months later. Here are 10 hidden references in superhero movies. Big Hero 6, Common Rider and Super Sentai Masks. Big Hero 6 marks Walt Disney Animation Studios' first foray into the Marvel Universe. The film became a big hit and another successful installment of the second Disney Renaissance. The character Dr. Fred, who becomes Fredzilla, is a total fanboy. He is a man cave full of comics, toys, video games, costumes, and various memorabilia. Big Hero 6 is a movie filled with hidden references and Easter eggs, from the hidden Mickeys to the wanted poster for Prince Hans from Frozen. One of the more amusing, obscure references is the placement of the Kamen Rider and Super Sentai-inspired masks in the background of Fred's geek room. Kamen Rider and Super Sentai are Japanese superhero-esque shows that usually feature teens or young heroes transforming into armored heroes that protect the innocent from evil monsters. Super Sentai, well, it's essentially the basis for what became Power Rangers in the US. A reference to Kamen Rider in a Disney movie? It doesn't get much better than that. The Dark Knight Rises, the Robin Emblem. Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy is highly acclaimed and renowned. It's a serious, dark, and dramatic take on the Batman mythos. However, Batman's sidekick Robin never really appears in the trilogy, and John Blake doesn't count. However, the film does pay homage to the boy Wonder. During the football game where Bane starts his attack on Gotham City, there's a group of fans holding a sign that says, Rogues, referencing the fictional Gotham City NFL team, the Gotham City Rogues. It's interesting that the R letter for the signs is very stylized. It clearly resembles the classic Robin logo, which Robin usually sports on his trademark costume. So while Robin never makes a formal appearance in Nolan's trilogy, there is an homage to the character in some respect. Guardians of the Galaxy, the Cosmic Entities. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Cosmic Entities have been appropriated as the creators of the Infinity Stones, which are the major MacGuffins of many of the films. Their image can be seen in the temple where Star-Lord finds the orb, and in one of the holograms in the scene where the Collector explains the origin of the Infinity Stones. The image of these characters is incredibly significant, but incredibly easy to miss. The image of the Cosmic Entities represents death, entropy, infinity, and eternity. In the history of Marvel Comics, these beings are big movers and shakers who are rarely seen, but have influenced and been a part of major stories. They are creatures of omnipotent power. Considering that the goal of Thanos is to assemble the stones that cosmic entities created into his Infinity Gauntlet, does Thanos have higher goals in mind involving these creatures? Eh, moviegoers will know for sure in the next few years. Iron Man 3, Bambi Arbogast. Talk about a reference that's hidden. This one is for a character who doesn't even exist in a single frame of the film. During an early scene in Iron Man 3, Tony Stark's loyal friend and head of security, Harold Happy Hogan, speaks to a receptionist who cannot be seen on screen, referring to her as Bambi. This is, in fact, a reference to the character Bambi Arbogast. The character made her debut in the comics in Iron Man number 118 in 1979, and she's been one of the stable characters of Tony Stark's revolving cast for years. Man of Steel Blaze Comics some fans recognize the Wayne Enterprise building in the 2013 Man of Steel movie. However, there is yet another blink and you'll miss it cameo from another DC Comics reference. One of the billboards in the background of the Zod and Superman fight in Metropolis is actually a billboard for Blaze Comics. Blaze Comics is a fictional comic book label within the DC universe. The Blaze Comics usually feature another DC hero in Booster Gold. The Wayne Enterprise's reference is cool, but to throw in such an obscure reference for the Man of Steel movie related to Booster Gold is definitely impressive. Captain America, the Winter Soldier, the Lemurian Star. This is a more obscure reference that a lot of fans might miss. It's not a blatant name drop like Bruce Banner or Stephen Strange. At the beginning of the movie, Captain America and his team infiltrate a S.H.I.E.L.D. vessel that has been taken over by terrorists. The vessel is called the Lemurian Star, 
This is a reference to the sunken continent, Lemuria, from the Marvel Universe. Lemuria made its debut way back in 1969. It's a land ruled by the Deviants before it sinks. Lemuria has an association with another Marvel mainstay character in Namor the Submariner. Namor hasn't got his own movie yet from Marvel Studios, but hopefully it's only a matter of time. The Avengers, Hugin and Munin. Brother Ravens, Hugin and Munin are the servants of the Allfather, Odin. They've been present in the comics since the late 1970s, and they made their Marvel Cinematic Universe debut in 2011. However, that was not the last viewers saw of Odin's feathery friends. The Ravens had a blink and you'll miss it cameo in the Avengers, after Thor enters the picture and snatches his brother Loki from the Quinjet. Clearly, Odin sent Hugin and Munin to Earth to keep an eye on things, and report back to him on Loki's machinations. The Avengers, Lady Death. At the end of the movie, Thanos' servant, The Other, expresses that challenging the heroes of Earth is an event that means courting death. Is that nothing more than an ominous prophecy or a line with a double meaning? To casual moviegoers, this line doesn't really have any deeper meaning, but comic fans who have read Marvel's Infinity Gauntlet know it's a clever reference. When Thanos made his debut in The Avengers, it was a major turning point. It signified that Thanos would become the MCU's big bad and ultimate evil. It also proved that death is not something Thanos fears. The idea of courting death is exactly what Thanos wants. Throughout history, death has been the muse and great mistress of Thanos. You see, in the Marvel Comics pantheon, death is actually a woman. Thanos constantly tries to impress and curry favor with her by annihilating galaxies and civilizations. Certainly destroying entire universes and killing billions in her name would impress the Grim Reaper, would it not? Unfortunately for Thanos, keeping Lady Death amused is an uphill struggle. And again, the course of true love never did run smooth, even between an alien tyrant and the living embodiment of death itself. In short, courting death is exactly what Thanos wants. Iron Man, Captain America's shield. Before the Marvel Cinematic Universe took shape, audiences were introduced to the fan-favorite adventure, Iron Man. This was ground zero for what would become one of the most massive undertakings in the history of filmmaking. Iron Man has quite a few hidden references and easter eggs. In particular, keen-eyed fans can spot that a familiar tool is present in Tony Stark's workshop. The shield is in the background and very easy to miss. That tool is none other than the familiar shield of Captain America. A small bit, but for dedicated fans it represented a sign of the excellent things to come. The shield made a more blatantly gratuitous appearance in Iron Man 2, but uh, the less said about that one the better. The Dark Knight, the Joker's mask from 1960's Batman TV series. The Dark Knight is a heralded modern classic. It's a groundbreaking film that broke the mold and expectations for what comic book superhero movies are and could be to moviegoers. The film is iconic and best known for its performance by the late Heath Ledger, who posthumously won an Academy Award for his performance. It's the first and only time an actor won an award for an acting performance in a film based on a comic book. The Joker's first appearance on screen in the film is actually a clever reference. The camera pans up to the Joker's figure from behind and he's holding a clown mask. That clown mask is actually a reference to the equally iconic and beloved 1960s Batman TV series starring Adam West and Burt Ward. In the first season episode of that show, The Joker is Wild. The Joker, Cesar Romero, is in disguise as an opera singer, wearing a rubber clown mask and performing Pagliacci. That same clown mask is worn by Heath Ledger's Joker as part of his disguise for the thrilling bank heist. Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy and the Adam West TV series are as different as night and day, but it's amusing to see a clever reference from that show built into The Dark Knight. If anything, it's symbolic of the evolution of the Joker character in motion pictures. Those were 10 hidden references in superhero movies. Were you clever enough to spot any of them before we pointed them out? Let us know in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.